$1,200 vest for $500 vest. Things just got a little interesting. This week's video is gonna be brought to you by Galls. And the product we're gonna be looking at today is the Galls Active Shooter Body Armor Kit. Despite all the fluff, just for that level four plate. I want to give a little bit of context about this company, Galls. If you're in the field, you obviously know who they are. But if not, they're one of the major, if not the most prominent supplier of law enforcement products in the business. Now, I was lucky enough to have them reach out to me. They are sponsoring this video. And I think this is going to be something that administrators, police officers, anybody in the career is gonna find a use for. I don't like the term active shooter when it applies to products because everybody has this idea in their head of active shooter being at you know a school or some big event. And while that's true, that's where they happen. A lot of the active shooter situations we run into are domestic disturbances or times where we don't know that someone's going to be flying rounds outside of a structure at us. So even though some of these products are termed active shooter, these are things that I would grab getting out of my cruiser with my rifle right away, basically accompanying me anywhere that my rifle would go. So what is the need for these type of products? When you're talking about an active shooter product or some other high level defense product, you are trying to be prepared for the worst. So that would be a combatant or suspect armed with a rifle. We're talking like a 7.62 round or a 5.56 round, 2.23, same thing. But a situation where you would have some high powered competition. So to give you a real quick brief rundown on NIJ levels, which is what your body armor is going to be rated at. So you've got the level 2A vest, that's basically gonna stop a nine millimeter or a 40 caliber weapon. It's right around four or five millimeters thick. I forget which one, I think it's four millimeters. Then an offshoot of that, you've got a level two NIJ rating that's rated to stop a 357 Magnum round, but it's important to note both of those have no rifle round protection. You go one step up to a level 3A, that'll stop 357 SIG, 44 Magnum, still no rifle round protection. Level three is the first step into a rifle round protection that will stop a 762 leg core round. Level four is tested to stop a 30 caliber steel core rifle round, otherwise known as armor piercing. Some common ammunition out there that you're going to see in rifles that we would encounter, 5.56-223. So I think the reason they don't really play too much to that 5.56 or 2.23 rating is there's just such a wide variety of that ammunition. Most of the lead core 5.56 used for like hunting and target shooting, that'll be stopped by a level three vest. Nearly all body armor manufacturers that rate their vest to stop the military grade 5.56 with the either full or partial uh, steel core will recommend some type of ceramic or metallic component based plate to stop that round. As all police officers know, space is highly valued. Weight is highly valued. So the more you can cut down on that, well not cut down on space, but make more space and the more you can cut down on weight, the better. So when I first started going and getting your armor sucked, not your normal everyday body armor that you wear with your patrol uniform, but your rifle rated armor, it was horrible. Okay, so to give you a little insight on then and now, here's what I used to have to grab. Big, heavy plate carrier. Plate here, plate here. And now, this is a plate. Much lighter, there's nothing to this, but still level four. This is level four rated. So why does weight matter so much? You might be saying, uh, just suck it up. You know, you're a cop, you should be out there. You're out there fighting crime. You should be wearing that heavy stuff. 
Uh, the reality is when you go into a real world situation, someone pops off a couple rounds, you show up, you're setting up a perimeter and you are standing, you are standing forever. Those carriers get heavy. Also the old ones, they are massive. A Velcro here, Velcro here, Velcro around your waist. They're notoriously difficult to lug around. Another thing, the plate carrier I just showed you, to get the plates and the carrier from that manufacturer, and this is a pretty standard price, you're looking around $1,000, $1,200 per carrier and plates. That scares a lot of agencies away from purchasing these things to outfit their vehicles to respond to these high risk incidents. That in turn makes officers less safe and less prepared. The great thing about what Gauls offers is everything that I'm about to show you, $500. Right now, I think it's $400. So they are half, more than half, the price of these other companies. And when I looked at their active shooter kit, I was pretty surprised to see Paraclete armor in there as well. Paraclete is a great armor brand. So basically with Gaul's kit, you get two plates. You don't have to buy them separately. You get two level four rated plates. Again, these are so much better than what I used to have to carry around in my other carrier. You also get the plate carrier. It's gonna look just like every other plate carrier. Prep these plate carriers in the Molly system here with things that you might use on that incident. So you could have a small med kit on there. You could have a chem light on there. Things to kind of get off your waist and immediately accessible to your chest area. Now later in the video, I'll show you how some of that attaches. I'll show you how easy that thing is to put on. And it literally is something that you can just throw in the back of your vehicle. And if you're going to that call or responding to that call, just prior to arriving, you can throw it right on you. There's just not a lot of adjustments and things like that that you have to mess with in that high stress situation. You can see from here how it really doesn't take up that much space. And this is something that you can run right out of the driver's seat and come to the back, throw this over your current vest and just be good to go. So here's the best part about the Gauls system as well. Right now, at the time of making this video, they've cut their price even further down to $400. You can use my code, code 664, and that'll be even more off of that $400. Some of you guys that work at really small agencies that have to provide a lot of the equipment yourself, this is a huge bonus for you because if you look at the competition, and I'm telling you, I won't put anybody on blast, but go out there and look at the competition of other active shooter kits or active shooter plate carriers, something that you can just grab out of the back of your trunk and throw on and be that much more prepared. Go look at those prices. You will see them north of the 800, 900, 000, $1,500 range. Again, use the code. Now the plates themselves, they're the shooter's cuts. You have a little bit more maneuverability. They're also curved to kind of fit to the contour of your body. That's really nice. They weigh right around seven pounds, maybe like 7.2 or 7.3, just a little over. Less than an inch thick. I think they're 0.8 inches thick. Again, level four protection. The plate carrier 1200D ballistic nylon construction has like that padded mesh interior to keep it off your body. The shoulder straps are adjustable. So if the sizing isn't quite right for the different officers that are in and out of that car, it does have some adjustment. Although it's worth noting, these do come in different sizes if you're going officer specific. To the naked eye, these two probably seem very similar and they are, which is great. But to a cop here are the differences, much heavier, much, much heavier and more cumbersome to put on. The Gauls version, much lighter for, you know, administrators or officers looking to purchase themselves, much, much, much cheaper. And this one is designed for quick deployment. You can literally throw this over your shoulders in a matter of seconds, strap it down and be good to go. Now look, I'm not doing any justice comparing these two things in a stupid suit and tie. So let me get out of here and actually show you guys the difference. I need a little bit more space, so I came down to our SWAT building to do a quick demo for you to kind of show you how easy and maneuverable this vest is. Now, to give you an idea of what I was talking about earlier, this uh, technically is a police vest, but this is not rifle rated. So if you actually go into these vest carriers, you can expose the actual vest. And like I was saying, this would just kind of be your, your standard vest that we would carry. Then you got your rifle plating, like I showed you earlier. And that is the main difference between the two. It would just be too uncomfortable to wear that rifle plating out in the field 
every single day for eight, 10, 12 hours. All right, now I think I'm a little bit more prepared for this demonstration. Typically when you're putting on your regular vest before shift or before roll call even happens, uh, a lot of us have vest carriers now. If you don't, you're just wearing it under your shirt. Most of you are pretty familiar with how these fasten up. So yeah, other than missing my badge, I'd be ready to go with my body armor. All right, when I talk about staging the vest, staging is really important. And that's mainly because there's gonna be more than just you using this vest, most likely, if it's sitting in a car. So on this vest in particular, if you're looking how to stage it or the way that I stage it, these flaps here to the side, they wrap around your torso. So they're meant to tuck in here, like all the other standard tack vests. But the problem with that is if you leave it tucked in like that, you're not getting this over your head, not unless you are extremely small. So cops come in all different shapes and sizes. So the best thing to do in this situation is stage the vest. So the way I stage it and the way I found is the easiest to stage it is you take these straps and you Velcro them at the outermost point. And you can just make sure it's, it's staged like this at the beginning of each shift. So that way this is as wide as it's gonna get. So if you're putting that over your torso, that's as wide as that's possibly gonna get, right? And when you get on scenes like that, uh, whether someone's shooting at you or not, as long as that information's in your head and you're processing it, your motor skills go down, they go way down. So you wanna make everything as easy as possible for you. So I also staged this flap to where it just takes a simple um, pull of this strap to get it up rather than if I kept it like this, um, I might be struggling with that and that would all be upside down as well. So I just barely get the stick on the Velcro. You'll see there's a button back here. I have no idea if they intended this uh, button for this but I just keep it fastened like that. There, my, uh, my vest is staged. And I will show you here in the next portion how to throw that on real quick. So everybody's gonna have a different opinion. You know, you need to kit it out with this, get your gun up here, do all this and that. Um, okay, so that's up for debate depending where you work and what situations you're running into, you know, no matter what. But at bare minimum, what I would tell my guys to kit this out with when they're carrying it is some type of med kit. And again, that's a whole other video. I'm not really gonna go into what should be in your med kit, um, but you should have some trauma related items. So on the team, we use chem lights to mark doors and to point out things. So I would probably keep one in my uh, kit. Door stops, again, I've mentioned those a few times in my videos. They're great for uh, punching open doors and holding them. And that would be kind of the bare minimum other than the tourniquet, which I'll get to here in a second, of what you should keep on your kit. Now, I said what you should, I couldn't care less. Everybody's gonna have different opinions of that. Obviously, more mags would help, and we'd kind of fine tune that if, if I were calling the shots on that. More ammunition, that would help, yes. Um, some people go as far as to have distraction devices on their active shooter vest. That's, we're kind of getting into a whole other realm there, but these really are just intended, despite all the fluff, just for that level four plate. It's never a bad time to mention tourniquets. I've mentioned them probably a hundred times in my videos. Never a bad time. You know, not here, not hanging off your leg, not dangling up your sleeve or something. Get it where people can see it and where you can access it. And I've shown you in other videos, you can attach these things with rubber bands. That way you can rip them right off. They're exposed, they're not in that plastic. Get it out of the dang plastic and get this thing accessible and ready to use. It also has two pouches on either side of the straps where, I mean, this has the potential for keeping medical items. Um, I wouldn't like to keep them in there because they're concealed once you wrap this around your waist, but you could keep extra items in there that you might not necessarily need to immediately get to. The plates that you get with this, the Paraclete level four plates, they insert through the bottom. I know some vests have that, uh, I'm gonna knock a light over, have that drop top system where they'll come in up top. These actually, and you shouldn't really have to mess with this, but maybe one time, um, or if you clean your vest, you know, every time you clean your vest, but uh, there really shouldn't be a lot of times you're running into this. Anyway, uh, these insert through the bottom. So that is where that would go. And there's a strap in here to hold that into place. And there's not really 
a lot of adjustment within there, but you can probably bump it up maybe, I'd say three to four inches, depending on where you have your adjustment strap. Just remember the shoulder straps are probably the most important because that's what's gonna get your precise fitting. But these paracleat plates, they drop right in through the box. Oh, there goes a the light. Like I just showed in the staging demo, if you're doing this right, this thing should just fly right over your head and like a second or two. It shouldn't take long at all. These things are kind of like a, you know, even though they're sized out a little bit, they can be one size fits all. And most departments, I mean, unless you've just got a ton of money to burn, are probably only gonna throw one active shooter kit or high risk kit in a vehicle at a time. So many people need to wear it. So it's really important to get this thing staged correctly at the beginning of each of your shifts. So if it's staged correctly, it should go just about this fast. Just get under it. and you're good to go. Now, at this point, you're protected, and you can move around and do what you need to do at this point, but if it's stage correct, there's gonna be some parts you need to adjust once you get to an area of cover. So let me move this camera down a little bit. There, I think that should do it. So this is kind of what it looks like when it's going to be staged for you, but when you get to that area, there, that stopping point where you can take further precaution, you know, you have this staged correctly ripping that up and this is where you kind of get it contoured to your body it's still that wrap system that we're all familiar with you can kind of leave it hanging until you're ready to go and then this this is other than the uh, sweatpants that's pretty sweet this is the end product your duty belt does not affect this at all this is kind of the side profile of it and then the back hopefully you can see that here it is this is the profile and this guys this is a lot of utility here if you're on those major incidents and this is something that just you can't replace the security this provides and again i keep saying it, they're not all that different from these more expensive options all right that's it that wraps this video up as always i'm trying to get back to as many of the comments as i can it's impossible to get back to all of them but i really do make an effort to try to respond to you guys and answer your questions so if you have any questions on this just hit me up and let me know. Also, I want to thank the video sponsor again, Galls. They have been awesome to deal with. And it's not just this, guys. They have been really good to work with and to talk to and to kind of communicate with about what law enforcement needs from a supplier like that. And it's just been a real stand-up company to deal with. So I thank them very, very much for allowing me to review this and future products. Don't forget code 664, that is site-wide, so definitely it would be a plus to something like this. That's gonna be a lot of money off of a carrier, but that's site-wide, so if you wanna use that on anything site-wide, code 664, that will work for you. I'm already looking forward to next week and already shooting some stuff, so I'm gonna to try to go different routes here and there, but it's really all up to you, so the feedback I'm getting from you guys is exactly what you see every week. It's been great. Keep the questions coming. Keep the comments coming. And I'll see you next week. Take care, guys. More emergency sirens. Are you serious?